I had a vision, but I, I, I didn't have a story. <laughs> and I, I guess what I tried to do is create a story. And, um, um, but you, you're, you're quite right. I, I don't know what it is. I, I like to say it's a documentary because uh, it's not a film. But it, then it's not a documentary either, so I'm confused too. <laughs> Except that I feel what I've tried to do, I know this is, uh, I, I, wanted to, I, I wanted to make a kind of collage and put it together like a, uh, of stuff that by the end of it, you get the idea of what I was, uh, what I was doing. I wanted to, I wanted to, um, reflect some of who, uh, who Oscar Wilde was, what he went through, but not intensely, not, not like a documentary would do it, which would be much more complex. I thought that if I gave a, an overview of Oscar Wilde and, 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 and connected it in a way with the struggles we were having to put a play on and the actual uh, play of Salome, that somehow they would um, inter interconnect and somehow it would, uh, it, it would be revealed by the end of the movie uh, what I was trying to say. Well, at least it would have been revealed to me, uh, but I, I think that's what I was doing and uh, trying to sustain it. There, there's Jessica Chastain who uh, I really believe uh, is the reason I made the movie. Because as soon as I met her and saw her, I, I, I thought this is, this is the person to do play Salome. If I ever saw one, I, I, must, I must get her to play it before the world picks her up as it's done now and turns her into the next big star. So she was very, uh, very gracious and, and, and said yes, and so we did it. And um, I, I think it was this, um, this idea of creating something that uh, would um, re reveal things about myself also, because I, I, inter, I inter, interject myself throughout it uh, as a kind of, uh, you know, goofy guy. <laughs> or someone who's trying to uh, deal with the, the, the process, the whatever you want to call it, the process of making movies or doing plays or the creative process. You can call it all these things, but uh, that was my idea. And uh, the idea of Richard III, when I did the, a movie about 15 years ago called Looking for Richard, was simply to see if I could get the audience to relate more to Shakespeare if I broke, broke it down, that play, Richard III, using documentary style. Because in America at the time, and still is, the Americans and their relationship to Shakespeare, and myself being an actor who has always wanted to play Shakespeare and has played Shakespeare, but it is difficult in our country of America to be accepted uh, readily, or it was, as, as, a, uh, as an American doing Shakespeare. That belonged to the, to the rest of the world. With Americans, it, it, it was somewhat, uh, except for the great actors who have played it and uh, have, have, have risen above the prejudice, and, and, and the great Joseph Papp, who created the public theater, where he inter, uh, interracial uh, casting and stuff. So people from all parts, because in America we're from all parts of the world. And, uh, and, 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 and so to be able to express that in a film. But what the film was always trying to do was present, by the end of it, this play, Richard, that you now, as an audience, hopefully understood. That was my whole point. In Salome, it's to give a sense of what I felt when I saw the play and to give a sense of, uh, of, of a great writer, uh, a genius, if you will, who was taken out 
before his time and, uh, in, in, and, and to show in a way some of the, 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 um, the style of his play Salome and how it, uh, how passionate it, it, it is and was and uh, how the Salome, um, some of the uh, issues in Salome the, in the play are revealed and how interesting they are and how inventive Oscar Wilde was in doing this, this which is not his style of writing at all. It's, he's known for something entirely different. So, and I thought by covering his life a little bit, it would shed some light on the play. I, I think I could go on talking forever if someone doesn't stop me. I'll, 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 Just I'll, ask him what it's about there. and he'll go on for four days. There, there, there's no question here. Uh, the, 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 the thing is, when you work in the theater, in the live theater, and you work with your uh, fellow actors and actresses, and you have a bond that happens. It just is a natural thing. And um, um, it, it, sometimes early on, it's a little, uh, you know, a little difficult. Maybe people are not as open. Uh, 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 nor am I uh, 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 early on, but after a few days, everybody sees we're in this thing together, and I, 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 I think of it pretty much as a kind of high wire act theater. I think it's like we're all up there performing this uh, this act, and uh, we depend on each other because if we don't do it together, we fall. And I think once that is instilled in, uh, and it's, it's a kind of a, it's the way we are in theater today. That's come the last hundred years with Stanislavski and the method and the way we approach theater as a group and theater companies and stuff. In the old days, before television or movies, it was an actor manager and the star actor was the center of attraction. Here we do it as, as a group, but even in Shakespeare's day, they worked as a company so it's, in, it's inherent in the very um, um, uh, context of, of theater that, that people are together because you need to be. Because every time you, know, you forget your lines on stage, you need help. <laughs> the, the, the great uh, Raul Julia was uh, you know, a Hispanic who did some really great acting in the, in the Shakespeare Theater. I think Joseph Papp opened the door to um, a lot of the ethnic uh, community to do Shakespeare, and he toured it. And uh, it, was, uh, it, it was revelation, and that was a good uh, 40 years ago. So I think a lot has, uh, a lot has, uh, we've, we've changed. I don't think there's that old prejudice uh, nearly as much as it was in the old days. And, uh, the, the, and I, and I, I guess that looking for Richard was that it, you know, subscribed to that idea, and I think I sort of covered that in looking for Richard, and uh, ex, ex, in a way expressed it and exposed it too, you know, and I think in uh, this piece you say why I took so long. Well, uh, I, I didn't know where I was going with it, and we, we, we. We operate on, uh, you know, by the fly here, and any documentary filmmaker will tell you it does take a while. But I was doing other things intermittently. I had other movies I would go off to do. And, but interestingly enough, having worked on it, finally I said to Barry Navidi, the producer here, who was without which I, this thing would not have happened. He he was such a he made such a major contribution artistically to this endeavor. He, he, I couldn't do it without him. And we did it together. And so uh, at one point I said that I wasn't going to look at the movie for five months because I didn't know where to go with it. And finally at five months I took a look at it and, and uh, I, I sort of knew what to do. I, I, I think it's like if you do a painting and you step back from the painting in order to see it. I think part of my, uh, my luck was that uh, it worked because uh, we had been showing it to audiences and occasionally I would get feedback, but it wasn't until I stepped back. 
And I think that's part of what, and then five weeks later I had done what you saw, I finished it. I knew where it was. I didn't while we were doing it. Since, uh, since that's we're... because you don't, when you don't have a script, I, I, I tell you, I recommend having a script to myself too. I say it every day, I'm gonna have a script next time, if there is one. 